Ladies and gentlemen, patriotism is not nationalism. Patriotism was shared by those people from all political parties, from every walk of life. In the First or the Second World War, throughout our history, it is about allegiance. It is not about a political construct. This great debating chamber in 1939 voted against the proposition that this house would stand for king and country. Within six months, we were at war. Those people who went to war, two of whom are there, Mr. Cadogan and Mr. Kershaw, library, librarian and secretary of this very union, died in that war. I don't know what their politics were. It doesn't matter. The patriotism which led them to fight was to do with duty and allegiance. And a patriot is one who strongly supports, so the Oxford Dictionary tell us, their country and is prepared to defend it. That is the crucial question. It's not just about histrionics. It's not just about universalism. It's not just about party politics. It's about the necessity to defend your country. Those people fought and died for their democracy, for the liberty of all people from all political parties, which is why I so much endorse what Jonathan said. He quite rightly said it's an astonishing thing. I don't think it is so astonishing, but he said it all the same, that he and I should be on the same side. But we come from the same root. It is the defence of liberty and liberty has no political allegiance. That is why patriotism is the essence, is the essence. No, I was not enthused by the extent to which you wanted to ask so many questions. You had your opportunity, but you can try this once. <laughs> <laughs> if liberty has no allegiance, then why do you have to have an allegiance to your country in order to defend it? For the very simple reason, for the very simple reason that patriotism is the determination to defend the basis on which that country can decide what kind of society it wishes to pursue. That is why it is not party political, I say to Mrs. Friedman. It is about the question of defending the values which your country represents. I would just like to make a further point with respect to the fact that it is not nationalistic either, because I want to quote a very famous German historian who, after the First World War, said the following about this country. His name was Wilhelm de Belius, and he said... England is the single country in the world that in looking after its own interest has at the same time something to give to others. The single country where patriotism does not represent a threat or challenge to the rest of the world. Within a matter of a few years after he wrote that, we were there on our own with people from every political class fighting to prevent tyranny, dictatorship, dictatorship, and Nazism, to fight tyranny. This is the point I wish to make, which is that patriotism does not have a political colour, despite what has been said repeatedly on the other side of this house. It is a complete and total travesty, to put it in those terms, Gandhi was a patriot. Nelson Mandela was a patriot. 
and so was Churchill a patriot, and so was Attlee, and so was Bevan. The fact is that this is the most important type of debate that we can have. It is actually more important than anything else. For this reason, that without patriotism as defined, it is not possible to have that unity of purpose which enables you, as a country, to be able to defend the values such as liberty, such as democracy, which enable you to be able to make informed decisions as a matter of freedom of choice. Freedom of choice in the marketplace and freedom of choice in the ballot box. That is what the essence of patriotism is, not some universalism. It's about the practical application of it. I do not need to make a long speech on this subject for the simple reason that it is so simple. And that is why I invite you to agree with the proposition that this House is proud to be patriotic. I would simply conclude by saying, and quoting the words from Rupert Brooke, who wrote in 1914 these very, I believe, moving words. A patriot who didn't want to be in the war, but did it because he had to be in the war. I do not buy this argument, having just been by Westminster Abbey to see that sea of poppies and all those crosses. Come and see it if you want to actually experience it. My own father was killed in Normandy in 1944. And last Thursday, I took with me one of his fellow comrades to that remembrance place. And he was with him, now aged 93. He said it was the most moving thing in his life because he knew that although he had survived, all those others represented by those crosses from every walk of life, from every religion, from every class, from every political party and persuasion, went out as a matter of duty. So I will conclude with those words of Robert Brooke. If I should die, think only this of me, that there's some corner of a foreign field that is forever England. And think this heart, all evil shed away, a pulse in the eternal mind, no less, gives somewhere back the thoughts by England given, her sights and sounds, dreams happy as her day, and laughter learnt of friends and gentleness in hearts at peace under an English heaven. That man died as a patriot. Thank you.